This video is to show you how to analyze your gel photograph. What you see in front of you is a gel photograph that won't look like what you've got, although um, this has got a marker lane with DNA fragments of known sizes. Here are the known sizes in kilobase pairs uh, and a random selection of unknown DNA. You've got to produce a standard curve of uh, DNA of known sizes, so then you can use that standard curve as a graph to uh, decide how large each of your fragments of DNA are. So to do the first part, you should open up an Excel file and you will measure the distance migrated for each of these DNA fragments and link that up to the DNA size in base pairs. So the first DNA uh, fragment is 10 kilobases, which equals 10,000 base pairs. The next one is 8 kilobases, which is 8,000 base pairs, and so on. Next thing to do is uh, measure the distance that these fragments have migrated. To do that, um, this makes a bit larger. To do that, you might want to put a bit of a line across. Uh, you're meant to measure from the bottom of the well, which is the very bottom part, to the bottom of each of these bands and record how far they have gone. So I happen to be measuring in millimeters, but you can measure in whatever units you want, just as long as you're consistent. So the distance from this well down to the bottom of the first band happens to be 10.1 millimeters. Plug that in here. Oops. 10.1 millimeters. The distance that the second band has migrated, so it's slightly smaller from the well down to the front of the DNA, happens to be 11 millimeters. So there we go. And we just keep on filling that out. I've, here's one I've prepared before. I've measured all of the distances that the DNA fragments have migrated and I've linked them up with the sizes of the base pairs here. So you've seen this part before. Let's highlight the data and insert a scatter plot with no trend line. And what you get is this curved relationship. It's an exponential relationship. Just make this uh, nice and big. It's a nice curve. What we should do is add a trend line. Go to add trend line. Uh, it is an exponential relationship. So add an exponential trend line. You can see a nice curve there. Now, there are a few things you should do to make this analysis a little bit easier. The first thing you should do is change your DNA size axis, so your y axis, to a logarithmic scale. To do that, click on one of the numbers, right click, format axis, and then go to logarithmic scale. Notice now that the data points have converted to pretty much a straight line. You'll also notice that there might be quite a bit of unused space here. So to get rid of that, um, you can change the minimum or the maximum value that your axis has. I'm going to uh, set the minimum to 100. Minimum fixed, 100. There we go. Now, so the uh, graph takes up most of the space. To make this uh, even more useful, you should add more grid lines. So right click, add minor grid lines. And what you see here is a logarithmic set of grid lines where down the bottom we've got 100, 
this line is 200 base pairs, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1,000. Uh, then 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and so on. It's a logarithmic relationship. So you can now use this uh, as a standard to be able to measure some of these unknowns. Your unknowns will be out here. You won't know the DNA, uh, the base pairs, the size of your DNA. So you will use this standard curve. You will measure how far your piece of DNA has gone. And by working out along the, on the x-axis how far it's gone, um, you can put a line up to the line of best fit and then across. And that will tell you approximately how big your DNA fragment is.